Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today is a pop-out fun fold, really easy to make, looks difficult but so easy. I have two different patterns here using the new Fresh as a Daisy DSP in the Stamping Up annual catalog coming out on May 2nd and running till April 30th of 2024. I'm using the Cheerful Daisies with the Cheerful Daisy dies, and I'm gonna show you how fun this is. But a little story getting ready here. I made this video already, and I thought it turned out perfectly, but when I adjusted my camera, I must have changed it to, I pressed the button slow motion, and when I was reviewing it, I started going, blah, blah, blah. So um, for those that think I talk a little fast sometimes, Believe me, the slow motion was scary. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is start out, um, what I always do is I make myself a little dummy template here. Dummy template for me, the dummy. Okay, so I'm going to show you one making a really pretty paper in this Fresh as a Daisy paper. So many fun daisies, but there's this big piece in here that's one of those designer series papers that you wonder how to use, but this was a perfect card because I used the bottom half of it and I filled in with the matching part. So I thought that was exciting. And actually I was happy to do that because since I had to redo the video after making two cards already, I got to use that paper. So we're going to start with a piece of our new in color copper clay. It is a really pretty, um, more brown than our Cajun, definitely different than our Cajun craze. So um, if it's looking like kind of like that, but wow, it is so pretty. It might even like become like the soft suede um, and uh, pecan pie. So we're gonna start out with an eight inch piece. So we're shaved off, like not shaved off, but we cut off a half of an inch of it and we're at eight and five and a half. So we're gonna put it in our trimmer and we're going to score with the eight and a half inch side up against the top. This is wind tape, W-I-N-T-A-P-E. I got that on Amazon and it just gives me um, the ability to see um, up on the top as opposed to, you know, when it gets covered up here, that too. Um, and it has to read from right to left if you get a product that does that. So we are going to score at two. And we could flip it around and do two, but we have enough room right here just to go over to six. So we're going in two inches on each side of the card base. Now we're just gonna go counterclockwise so that our five and a half inch is up at this um, guide here. And we are gonna put it in at one and a quarter. Now what we're going to do is we are going to cut in one and a quarter, one and a quarter inches on each side, but we're gonna cut in between the score lines. So if you do the math, I also put a piece of white in there. You're, if you do the math, you're, that means you're coming down to two. And when you're at that two inch mark, I'm gonna lift this up a second here, the two inch, if you put it that little guide at the two, you're going to be, but you technically, if you can see your score lines, you just go down to the six. And if you're careful and you don't move that, which it usually stays in place, you can turn it around, put it at one and a quarter again, you're right at the six, and you can just go up to the two. There you go, lift it up, then we're going to turn it back with the eight and a half inch side at the top and we're gonna to go to three inches. We're gonna put our cutting blade at the top and we're gonna score in between those two cut lines. So that would be at one and a quarter and we're going to score down to four and a quarter. And we're going to go over to five and we're gonna do that again. We're gonna go from four and a quarter, that score line, four and a quarter, and we're gonna score up to one and a quarter. Okay, so we have two score lines that we've created that came in one and a quarter, one and a quarter. No, what? No, it wasn't, um, technically it doesn't matter. You're, you're at three, 
and five. So um, we've been able to score those, okay? Made sense? So what we did was we went at three and we just um, scored from the one and a quarter to the four and a quarter. We pushed it over to five and we scored again from the one and a quarter to the four and a quarter, which is three inches there. Okay, one more score line and we're done. We go to four and we are going to score from the cut lines to the edge of our cardstock. So out to the edge of the card bot base, mm -hmm. and then we come back down to four and a quarter, which is where our cut line was, and we're going down, okay? Score line at two, score line at three between the cut lines, score line at five between the cut lines, and then a score line at four. Oh gosh, you got that all right, okay. Looking at this, this template here, we've scored it two and six, and then we turned it and we went in one and a quarter and we scored between two and six and between two and six, one quarter in this way. Then we turned it back this way and we went to three, we put it at three and we scored from the one and a quarter to the four and a quarter. We pushed it to five and we went from one and a quarter to four and a quarter. And then we went back to four and we scored from the cut line up and the cut line down. So that is our card base. Now I would suggest if you end up with any kinds of little raggedies like I do here, even when I clean my trimmer, it really works to clean those up now before you start playing. So I can just clean those edges up and they were on the back and they're good there. So now I can play around with getting my folds. And I just use my bone folder and I pull it across that score, score line. And then you can see on these cards, you have it popping up here in the middle. And you just kind of play around with it till it kind of folds into place. Not being too, too rough with it at first. You just bend it so the score lines. And then it's so much easier to start putting your paper on. And then here and here, here, here. Okay, the fun thing about this card is once you start putting your DSP and your card stuck on, you can do different things. Like on this card, you can see I put cardstock that was embossed with our 3D embossing folder, this cross hatch design. Those are not in the catalog coming up, but they're in the online exclusive. So if you haven't purchased them already, they are available. There are three basic I, I would say just you, uh, you're gonna use them all the time. It has cross hatching. One has a really pretty, des another like design that's kind of uh, very universal and another one that has polka dots. So I put them this way, but on this card, I did all of these in cross hatching. And I left these pieces here with the card stock showing through because I think it just gives it, it lets that flower jump out more when it's on this um, darker color. So you can take these little pieces here and you can make them all five of them this way, or you could play this way. And what's neat about this card is if you turn them the opposite way and put them into your card envelope, then when they, they kind of then mold that way and they see that design there. So look, look here, you could do, or you could do it this way. So you see the flower there. So that's really fun, but we're gonna do one on this um, video here, and we are going to pop in using that really cool piece that's in there and use all designer series paper. So we've got two pieces that are here using that copper clay. This is the boho blue is the background. I do believe, I don't think it's Azure, though it is, um, the Azure is in there. Um, you're gonna hear me saying that. Make sure you are putting your DSP going the right way. There is a direction to this DSP. Oh gosh, look at the middle of those daisies. So pretty. And this has that beautiful copper clay on this side too. 
Now this would be a DSP that you actually could use both sides in these places. Like you could put, I'll show you in a second here. So we're making sure the daisies are going the same direction, the little white stems. So here we go. Look how beautiful that pops out. I'm glad I had to make this video over. <laughs> Boy, it was so funny. I kept listening to it going, what is going on? Now we're gonna put the blue right there in the middle because that's gonna give us a good opportunity to um, pop that white daisy. What I love about this um, DSP, it does have some a bunch of um, patterns in there that you can use that pretty white daisy. So we're gonna put that, let's push this down here. We're gonna, well, it's kind of easier to see when you have it pushed a little bit of a different way. So we're gonna, oh, there we go. I'm gonna push that in the middle here. I think I'm gonna, oh, there, just close it up. Then you can see the four corners so that you have a nice, so it's straight, okay? So we've put that blue in the middle. Now this is where you could literally put anything in these. I decided to go ahead and use these daisies because I didn't use them on the other one. But you could, now that I kind of scratched on that one, um, you could put these in here, but why would you? Because <laughs> they, you would not see them. Okay, so let's put, I'm actually gonna put a little glue on here because I know well, I was just gonna say, I know where it's going, but then I just got a little bit off the edge. That is not what I did. Okay, so we're gonna put one in there. Trying to line up this horizon line there. And then don't do what I did before, that was dumb. Now let's put this one in here. And it all depends on what your, you know, designer series paper is, or if you only have the strips to do the designer series here, you can put anything on these other things. Make sure my daisies are going in the right direction. Yeah. This is a great card to do with this designer series paper. Because when you cut it, you do end up with these little pieces left over. And all I did was cut, I took this and I cut two one and three quarter inches pieces. So I used this one and three quarters. Oh, by the way, all my measurements and everything I use on my video are over on my blog underneath the YouTube description if you just press visit my blog here, it'll take you right over to there. But these were one and three quarters to fit into that two, two inch um, wide scored area. So that way I only used two of two strips that were one and three quarters. So I still had a big piece left over because I ended up using these pieces um, on the card. So there we go. And then we're just gonna come over here to this really pretty daisy. We could pop that on right now without anything and it looks gorgeous, but we're gonna actually give some texture by using these dies that also come in the um, set. And it, of course, I was looking for my silicone craft mat that I just had. Oh, where do these things end up going? I don't know. I think I've been on a search for about 10 different things here this morning. Just, okay. Okay, and, and put some on the back of this one. There we go. Okie doke. So I'm gonna grab my little tweezers here. It just makes it a lot easier to put these pieces on here. This one, and you almost have to think to yourself, now where is this one go? Okay, this one goes, you almost have to say to yourself that they don't have to be, where's the three that are together here? 
that they don't have to be perfect. You just have to slap them on there. Okay. And then we'll put this one on. And then this big one here on. And he ha goes there. And put that one on. Got this great flower now to go on here. Now, this card is going to be, this card, is, now this one, because you have all the designer series paper, you could actually fold them the same way this way, but it actually looks better if you fold them to either side here. Now, this one, you have to make sure that you fit your flower within the four inches here, because it would go to four and a quarter, because this is a four inch wide card, and it could go out a little bit, but it's going to get all bungled up. So these two petals and these ones here on this side and a couple here, we can put uh, glue on to adhere it to the card. I'm going to just test this here. Okay, I can get a little, one more shot of glue here. Okay. And we're just going to get that so that it opens up nicely. I hope I didn't get too much glue. Did I get any? Ah, I have a little bit of glue over here. I'll make sure not to shut it till it's closed. Okay, so you'll notice on this one, I used our new embellishments. The adhesive backed solid gems that have the lemon lolly, the boho blue, and look at that, the copper. So we are going to use the copper clay. I think I glued this together here today. There's gotta be a better way to put these things in containers. So on this card, I used the lemon lolly because it was um, scattered in the designer series paper and it looked really pretty popped out there. But this one, it has the copper clay on the inside of the flowers. So I am just going to put some copper clay on here. So there's one. And then we'll do a little medium one. And then a little baby one. Oh, so baby that it flew. Oop. There we go. Fumbly fingers today. There we go. So we use those. Oh, I love those adhesive backed solid gems. Make sure those are on your list. So we were able to put some embellishments on there because of course you have to put some kind of embellishment on your card, right? Very seldom that can we get away with not doing that. Um, and oh, I'm just looking at my, I'm having a little bit of an issue here. I wasn't paying attention with my leaf here. That is what we want to make sure that we don't do is get it, like see, I'm, it's getting impeded here a little bit. So what I might do is, hmm, how do I fix that? Because it is going to, no, it's, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put a Oh, this was the thing I was happy about um, messing up. The stamp set has this oopsie daisy so sorry. There's not a lot of so sorry's that you're going to do, except for, in my opinion, is the oopsie daisy so sorry, I missed your birthday. Do you see that in here? No. Hello, stamping up, you should have put it in there. Well, I decided to pull it out of another stamp set we have coming out, the Lasting Joy. Lasting Joy has I Missed Your Birthday. So I just put that in there. You flip it over and you can put that there. So I guess you might just have to get that Lasting Joy to get that. Or you may just have another stamp set that has something about missing a birthday. So the oops -a daisy is perfect to pair up with that sentiment. So that's what I did. And I also, on this back piece, instead of making it um, one and three quarters by five and a half, I mean five and a quarter, I gave it another little scotch 
a bigger and I'll have that measurement on the blog but that way you have a little more room to write your message and they they aren't really going to notice that the border is the different on this side but it gives you just a little I mean an eighth of an inch I mean really did that really matter but I also did it on a diagonal because I kept stamping this and every time I stamped it it wasn't straight so when you're having that problem of getting a straight sentiment slant it so it looks like that's the way you meant it to be. So there you go. Wait, here we go. Did I do that right? Yes. Oh, good. I thought I did it upside down. So I am going to play around. I might snip this and glue it back down here, but I, I don't know. Will, is, will it mess up when you're sending it? No, just send it this way. There you go. So three fun cards using different patterns in the Fresh as a Daisy DSP with the Cheerful Daisies bundle. Hey, make sure you take a look at my blog because I'm having a paper share. And the paper share ribbon and embellishments, you can get a sample of all the DSP and the specialty papers in this paper share. I have to tell you, this is one of the greatest bargains that you can get. For less than what a bundle costs, you can actually get a sampling of all the papers instead of getting a whole pack of 12 by 12 and you're not sure if you you know what to do i mean for 50 dollars you can get the a sampling of all of them six by six pieces that are more than enough to do one or two cards and i pay the shipping so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com or you can text me at 724-323-2296. Call me as well. If you can't get a hold of me on email or on my blog post or on the YouTube commenting, just keep figuring out how to do it. The email for subscribing to my blog is sent by WordPress. So do not respond with confidential like credit card information or anything like that that you don't want public because if you comment on my blog, it goes public. So if you need to email me, cindyleeb at gmail.com. Just remember when you get a post showing that I posted on my blog, that is not from me, that is from WordPress. So if you have a question, email me personally, cindyleeb at gmail.com. Thanks for buzzing by friends.